Gemini 3 anticipation is reaching absolute fever pitch as people are pretty convinced now that it is coming this week. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. It is a big risk as a podcaster to talk about speculation about an imminent release. The chances are just so good that by the time someone hears the show, the thing that you're talking about people all hyping up will actually be out and the show will instantly be dated. However, in this case, I don't care. First of all, it's a huge part of the conversation going on right now all over the AI community. And second, I kind of feel like it's similar to when you're in a restaurant and you've been waiting for your meal for a while and you head to the washroom in hopes that by the time you come back, your food will be sitting there waiting for you, all glittering and ready. In other words, if it happens to be the case that Google pops in and drops Gemini 3 right on top of my head, I'll take it. Now, generically, people have been getting excited for the Gemini 3 release for a while. However, it certainly feels basically confirmed at this point with a teasing tweet from Google CEO Sundar Pichai on Friday. Sundar retweeted Polymarket showing 69% odds of the model being released this week with two thinking face emojis. Other Googlers, basically all over X, are also teasing the release. You even have some of the OpenAI folks getting excited. With Adam GPT posting, I'm excited for the rumored Gemini 3 model. Seems like it has the potential to be a real banger. Now, as Vrasser X pointed out, if even an OpenAI employee is this chilled about Google's rumored Gemini 3, you don't need a decoder ring to see what's going on. OpenAI must have an absolute monster model lined up for December. Business Insider certainly views the final few weeks of the year as a shootout between the Google and OpenAI teams. They wrote, If Gemini 3 is a smash hit, and right now, insiders tell Business Insider that the new model is extremely impressive, then it could give Google a shot at taking the top spot, a position it's been vying to reclaim since the generative AI boom began. Many are betting on Google. Chubby wrote, Edgy take, neither OpenAI nor Anthropic will have a good answer to Gemini 3 anytime soon. Gemini will remain the best and increasingly popular AI model for a considerable time. Testing catalog went one better, adding, Google will likely be the first to reach level 3 and actually make a publicly available product offering at a level 3 scale very soon. Now, level 3 refers to the five-level framework for AI that came out of DeepMind and then was refined by OpenAI, with level 3 being agents or systems that can take actions. The hype is in fact getting so hypey that some are making fun of it. Boyan Tungus writes, Gemini 3 is so powerful it made Chuck Norris concede defeat. Andre Karpathy said, I heard Gemini 3 answers questions before you ask them, and that it can talk to your cat. Some think the entire AI narrative is riding on the model being transformative, with DMT Capital commenting, If Gemini 3.0 doesn't cure cancer or world hunger, it's going to be incredibly over. Now, Polymarket is currently pricing in a Tuesday release, so we probably won't have all that much longer to wait to find out. Now, moving over to the market side of the house, despite the fear on Wall Street, Berkshire Hathaway is buying into the AI bubble to the extent that that's what we have. On Friday, regulatory filings disclosed that Warren Buffett's investment firm had purchased around $4.9 billion worth of Google stock during Q3. The same filing showed that Berkshire had further trimmed their positions in Bank of America and Apple. Berkshire now holds a 0.3% stake in Google, which is relatively modest by their standards. Even after the selling, they still hold a 7.7% stake in Bank of America and around 1.5% of Apple. Still, it's one of the largest new positions bought by Berkshire since they began piling up cash in 2023. Around a third of the firm's portfolio, some $382 billion, is still held in cash as of the end of last quarter. For many investors, Berkshire buying AI stocks will be a huge signal to re-examine their views on a potential AI bubble. Although Warren Buffett has announced his retirement at the end of the year, Berkshire is still an embodiment of Buffett's investing style. And when it comes to tech, the style isn't necessarily that great. Buffett famously refused to buy into big tech as it led one of the longest bull markets in U.S. history during the 2010s. They finally bought Apple in 2016, but until now haven't owned any of the other Mag7. Berkshire typically doesn't invest in high-growth companies. Instead, they're a value investor looking for companies that are mispriced based on current metrics. Still, Buffett admitted that he blew it by not investing in Google earlier. In 2018, he said, I had seen the product work. I knew the kind of margins they had. I didn't know enough about technology to know whether this really was the one that would stop the competitive race. Buffett's longtime partner, the late Charlie Munger, put it more bluntly. In 2019, Munger said that he didn't feel badly for not seeing the rise of Amazon coming, but that he felt, quote, like a horse's ass for not identifying Google better. I think Warren feels the same way. Now, importantly, this isn't necessarily a massive bet on AI for Berkshire. 
Google is still only the 10th largest position for the firm, and they are notably not buying into the speculative semiconductor or data center management companies. But it is still a major position and suggests that Berkshire thinks Google will have a strong position as a U.S. tech leader in the medium to long term. It's also, frankly, not the kind of position you would put on if you believe the music is about to stop on a massive bubble in that sector. The position came about sometime in Q3, so Berkshire is already up at least 30% on it in just a few months. Google's stock rallied another 4% in after-hours markets over the weekend following the Berkshire disclosure. Now, staying on the bubble theme, a week after sending the bubble talk into overdrive, Michael Burry has shut down his hedge fund. Burry famously bet against the housing market in 2008, so when he revealed a big short on Palantir and NVIDIA, some believed betting against the AI bubble would be his next triumph. The media reported the Palantir short as a $9 billion bet, However, Burry corrected them last Thursday, noting that they got the math wrong and that he had only bought around 9 million worth of bearish Palantir options. The relatively small size suggests Burry didn't have many investors left after repeatedly shorting stocks over the past decade. And indeed, in a letter to investors dated October 27th, Burry said that he would be liquidating the fund and returning capital. He acknowledged, My estimation of value in securities is not now and has not been for some time in sync with markets. Now, the letter leaked towards the end of last week, but based on the date, Burry had already made the decision to close the fund when he deliberately made headlines by disclosing his positions early. Indeed, despite shutting down the fund, he is still pushing his short thesis on X, suggesting the AI CapEx boom will roll over next year and send the Nasdaq plummeting. The big question is whether he's still worth paying attention to. In a weekend op-ed, Bloomberg's Jonathan Levin asks what the obsession with Michael Burry says about ourselves. Writes Levin, We're obsessed with contrarian investors that make concentrated hero bets on macro outcomes, and our fascination has only grown as an artificial intelligence boom pushes valuations ever higher. In easily my most viewed tweet of all time, I put it a little bit more crisply. An entire generation watched the big short, thought Michael Burry was cool, and spent the next decade calling everything a bubble. There was actually a really phenomenal post from an account called TMT Breakout on X that basically argues that Sam Altman and OpenAI's aggressive announcement of all of these deals popped the non-bubble and put AI into a more scrutinized and reasonable place. They write, Bad news for the AI bulls and bears. The past few weeks has brought an end to that paradigm and led us to an unexpected turning point in the dynamics of the AI trade and narrative. On the three-year anniversary of ChatGPT's release, no less. And we have Sam's $1.4 trillion 30 gigawatt splurge to thank for it. Sam Splurge opened up AI Pandora's box, shifting the AI narrative in unexpected ways. Basically, they argue that the deal-making was so ubiquitous and overwhelming that it actually made people take a big pause. They write the ironic thing, if Sam Splurge would have been about half the size, things would have continued to grind along. Investors would have enjoyed the 27 and 28 visibility, maybe even building the energy for a large vertical ascent in price action. Instead, we had the opposite effect, pouring too much gasoline on the fire and drowning out the energy for a big move up. The conclusion? We think the straight-line, giddy phase of the AI trade will give way to something healthier, a phase where fundamentals and idiosyncrasies matter even more. Tech will always be a narrative in boom-and-bust heavy investing sector, that's part of the fun, but in a landscape where sentiment is more balanced, stock picking will become more relevant. That's a good thing. Sam Splurge popped the non-bubble, but the AI trade isn't broken, it's simply entering a more mature, scrutinized phase. Interesting stuff, but that is going to do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode. 